Good afternoon, everyone. Warmly welcome to this webinar on the consequences for students of the COVID pandemic and of the containment measures. My name is Siri Gloppen. I'm Professor of Comparative Politics at the University of Bergen and Director of Law Transform. I also co-direct the Bergen School of Global Studies. And the Bergen School of Global Studies and Law Transform are two of the institutions collaborating on this webinar. The other two are Bergen Global and the UIB Collaboratory. The UIB Collaboratory is a partnership between researchers and students aiming to mobilize innovation in research and higher education in order to deal with the challenges of the 21st century. At the Collaboratory, students are in the driver's seat in working with student-led higher education. And it was the Collaboratory who came up with the, the initiative and idea for this webinar. Law Transform, the Center on Law and Social Transformation is a research center aiming to understand how rights and law are used as tools for social change and to what effect. Like Bergen Global, it is a collaboration between the Christian Mikkelsen Institute and the University of Bergen. And last but not least, the Bergen School of Global Studies is a new initiative that brings together graduate programs, courses, and other research resources from all the faculties at UIB that are relevant for students who want knowledge on complex challenges such as climate transformation, inequality, migration, global health, and governance challenges. And this webinar is the very first in the seminar series established by the Bergen School of Global Studies. I would like you I would like to encourage you to check out the web pages for these different centers and initiatives, to follow us on Facebook for information about the work and research and about the upcoming events, or join as volunteers. This webinar is also the first in our new collaborative seminar series on students in crisis. The Students in Crisis seminar series will focus on how students play an important role when it comes to finding solutions to the greatest challenges and crisis of our time, and how they have taken a disproportionate part of the burden during this pandemic. This is the common starting point for our collaboration on how COVID-19 has affected and affects students and will continue to do so in uncertain ways in the future. As for today's seminar, we will talk about the situation of the students in relation to the corona measures of the last year. And continuing. It is almost a year now since the pandemic started to affect students' everyday lives. As local and national authorities began implementing measures to protect our society. Worldwide, students have been subject to special restrictions and have common as well as different experiences. And we think it's time to examine the measures and take a closer look at the effects. Did it put students in an even more vulnerable position? Or maybe a less vulnerable one? What has been done exactly and how has it changed the conditions which we live and study in? What could have been done differently? Based on our shared experience, what should we keep in mind when moving ahead? How can students be more of a resource, have a more important say in their own education, generally, but specifically in these times of the pandemic? In this seminar, we will look at these questions through the perspective of Bergen. Before I give the word to Ronja Reitan Solberg, student coordinator of the UIB Collaboratory, who will moderate the discussion and introduce today's panelists, I want to mention to the audience that you can ask questions via the Q&A function during the whole event. But now, Ronja, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you for the introduction, uh, Siri. Uh, my name is Ronja uh, and I'm a student coordinator at uh, the UIB Collaboratory. And uh, welcome to this first event uh, in this collaboration. And today for the discussion, I have with me uh, Lupna Jeffrey, 
Um, she is the city councillor for labor, social affairs and housing in the municipality of Bergen. I also have here Odrun Sandal, uh, vice, direct, uh, vice rector for education. And she's also been part of the national expert panel regarding attention given to students during the pandemic. Uh, we have here uh, Sandra uh, Kromsvik. She is the leader of the student parliament. And uh, Eystein Sandven, he's head of Summon Mental Health. Uh, he's also with us on Zoom. And Simon Bö, he's a student editor in chief of Catharsis here at UAB. And uh, first of all, I would like to ask you, uh, Lupna, you're with us on, uh, on Zoom. Uh, what has been the role of the local politicians uh, and the local government uh, in navigating through the pandemic? And how have, have the students been included in those considerations? Um, and what are your thoughts about the students at the UIB and the position they have had throughout this period? Hi, everyone. Uh, it's very nice to be with you today. I'm on my Zoom and I have Zoom on my iPad and I have my notes on my computer. So I have to forgive, ask for permission for looking uh, not directly on your on every times. But um, I understand you just want to go directly to the questions you have asked us. Um, so um, to take that, the local government has the primary responsibility for infection control and also has the authority to apply infection control measures as long as the pandemic has been ongoing in Norway. And of course, the national government plays a vital role as well, as you know, both national health authorities such as the National Institute for Public Health and the Director of Health and Advisory Organs towards the government, but also local governments during large outbreaks on certain situations uh, and now related to the COVID-19 pandemic. And, and during the past two weeks, we have had strict infection control measures decided by the national government, not the local government, then in practice makes the life of many of our inhabitants very difficult and especially maybe the students. The government has decided that the teaching will be digital for students with exemptions of those who need skills trainings or access to experiments, they are allowed. Um, and of course, in the question on how we include the students in uh, the considerations we are doing uh, and in the measurements we are uh, having towards to fight the pandemic, we have had a good dialogue with the education institutions in our city and also the students during the last semester as well of the beginning of this year. And also just recently, yesterday, we had a meeting in order to listen out the views and perspectives of the institutions and representatives uh, of the students. And I speak on behalf of the local government when I say that we are very aware of the tough and difficult situation the students have endured and are still enduring uh, during these times. Um, the students are a part of our discussions almost every time we have decided on strict measures and the effect that this, this has on the students in our city. And we are very worried of the consequences the strict measures will have in a long-term perspective, but also in a shorter perspective. And also in the same time, we are um, on the course also worried of the consequences if we hadn't decided to do some of the strict measurements we have been forced to do during the pandemic. Uh, thank you, Lubna. Uh, it is clear that there are a lot of uh, different levels in the governance uh, throughout um, this period. And we would love to have the national government represented here as well, but uh, Henrik Asheim didn't have the opportunity to be here, unfortunately. Um, Odrun, um, uh, who would you say is responsible uh, in this situation um, for the unproportional burden taken by the students uh, during the pandemic? And to what degree has the university had autonomy and flexibility uh, in making restrictions for the best for the students? And yeah, we can we can start with that, and then we can we can go on after. Hmm. 
Yes, thank you uh, very much, and, and thank you for organizing this event. I think it's it's very important that we go more in depth into understanding the um, the effects that the pandemic has on the student health. And I think in the in the beginning we addressed very much the learning uh, issues and how we could facilitate learning in the best possible way, uh, even within a, a pandemic. But later on, we became aware, uh, much more aware of the importance of also addressing student health as part of our measures when we were um, putting restrictions in place. And as an institution, I think that the responsibility is somewhat shared, I'd say. Uh, so we have the national uh, government that will uh, sometimes put in place uh, national um, measures that we all need to follow. And when we've had local uh, situations um, uh, with uh, higher levels of infections, the, the local government um, has put in place more uh, stronger, uh, stricter restrictions than the national government. And again, as an institution, we, we need to comply with the regulations then um, set out for higher education in, in Bergen, for instance. And so for us as an institution, we have all the time said that we need to follow the national government and the local government when they put restrictions in place. But we also need to make sure that the, the national government as well as the local government are aware of the needs that we as institutions may have to uh, be able to also cater for, uh, for the students' needs when it comes to learning as well as um, the psychological health. And I think uh, throughout the pandemic, uh, the most important inputs that we've had when it comes to understanding the needs of the students are from the students themselves. And um, as an institution, we have uh, throughout the pandemic had um, regular meetings with um, the student leaders, um, the, the parliament leader, and to, to really listen out what are the concerns and um, needs of the students. And, and it has been through that voice that uh, we as an institution also towards the local uh, authorities as well as towards uh, national authorities have been able to to put on the agenda the need to address not only uh, the learning outcomes and the progress of studies, but also to um, address the importance of the learning environment and by that also uh, students' health. So um, I think uh, that message reached also um, the, our Minister of Higher Education, Hendrik Alsheim, and uh, in November he um, constituted a, a working group, uh, an expert group, to look into measures that needed to be taken in order to um, address uh, students' health and, and uh, to see how we could prevent uh, stronger negative impacts on students' psychological health. And I think it was primarily in the autumn semester that we started to more systematically understand the uh, severe impact um, of working uh, from home for, for, for students in a small room where they study, sometimes also eat, but and certainly sleep. And within a few square meters you you spend all your waking hours and your sleeping hours and that that is a, a very burdensome and an isolated uh, situation that has a, a very strong and negative effect on on student health and i think uh, as we really took that perspective in uh, more systematically we were also able to voice that and and that was put on the table for the expert group to to address and uh, the measures that were, or the recommendations from that um, expert group uh, was that we needed to be very restrictive when it comes to closing down campus, because for students to come to campus to work is very important to get out of that small room and to get better conditions for working, but also opportunities to see and meet uh, fellow students within a setting where uh, the containment measures can be well taken care of. Because I, as an institution, we have certainly emphasized that, that campus should be a safe place for students to come also when it comes to containment uh, measures. So 
I think that the, the systematic dialogue with um, the students here has also been uh, taken forward in our dialogue with the uh, municipality. And I think the students themselves have been able to, and importantly, uh, able to raise their voice around the importance of coming to, uh, to campus to work. And also to um, also not be in that group because we had this situation in, in Bergen where uh, it, we had a high increase of um, uh, infections in, in the young group. And then the, the students at some point felt that they were blamed for the situation locally. And I think the, go the local government in Bergen uh, very um, did receive that message very well and, and were able to correct and, and make a, a better communication around uh, the, the, the issues of, of the young people and then later on emphasizing very systematically also the need for addressing student health. So I would say that um, our dialogue um, internally with students as well as staff around how we can facilitate um, um, teaching, um, as well as and having an open campus has been important. And we have had systematic dialogue with the local municipality, as well as then um, opportunities to also to lift this to, to national level. And I think this systematic co uh, conversation has been uh, important. And we had yesterday a meeting again with the local government and uh, where all the higher education uh, institutions in Bergen, along with the student parliament leaders, very clearly voiced the need to open campus now for, for student help. So we do certainly hope and, uh, and uh, expect uh, almost if uh, that, that that can be an opportunity because it is so uh, important and, and we will um, be able to put in place good um, working conditions for students when it comes to measurement, um, containment measurements at campus. Thank you, Aldrin. I think you cover a lot of, of important aspects here, and we will also get back to the health uh, issue when talking with uh, Öystein afterwards. Uh, and we will also get back to, uh, to the measures done by the university afterwards. Um, now, uh, Sandra, you're the leader of, leader of the student parliament uh, here in, in Bergen at the UIB. How has the student parliament been involved in the measures um, taken throughout the pandemic? And do you think that the student's point of view is, is sufficiently re represented in the measures? And uh, are there any rooms for improvement, do you think? Yeah, um, now both uh, Lubna and uh, Odrin has been uh, like uh, on the topic, but uh, as they say, we have been included in uh, the measurements uh, and, and how they, how we have like, yeah, uh, <laughs> came to the conclusions in the restrictions. So uh, that has been a very important uh, thing to, for us to be involved in, especially since it's regarding the students and our everyday life. Um, and uh, I think it has been quite a, a different type of year to be a student leader um, at the University of Bergen, because we get uh, involved in this type of situations that we didn't uh, before. I have a um, sort of an, an um, really nice colleague, uh, like <laughs> I have a really good connection with both the city council, with Lubna, for example, and with Roger and with um, with uh, Henrik Asheim as the Minister of Higher Education in Norway. And we have good connections with um, the university leaders and uh, other uh, actors that are um, relevant for us to have uh, involvement in the processes. So uh, that has been quite special to sit uh, as a representative for the students this year, uh, because as we have talked about earlier, it is uh, quite um, different to be a student in a pandemic. We are being addressed as the young, uh, like the future generation, but we, we often get like in between two chairs when it comes to restrictions. Um, because they, the governments are always talking about how important it is to do, um, like don't have quite the, the most um, um, measurements for the young um, generations, but the students isn't a part of that. So it has been 
quite challenging to to um, address this in the matter of um, the um, the media and how it was um, was um, uh, talked around students in the fall semester. So it has been a quite uh, challenging time, of course, but I will say that, yes, we have been involved and we have uh, been heard in our um, in uh, in um, our measurements. So, yeah, but of course, it's always it's difficult to say that it has been like 100 percent percent OK, because it's it's been challenging for us all. So it's a, a brand new situation to be in and, of course, difficult to know how to um, to fix things and how to how to restrict measurements. Absolutely, thank you. Um, uh, now we also have um, with us uh, Simon Bur. You're the editor in chief in Catharsis, a student magazine at the Faculty of, of uh, Psychology, and uh, you are among uh, several students and actors that has been criticizing the measures um at least to um to some limit uh, you criticized the university for not taking the student situation seriously why is that and uh who would you say is responsible for the unproportional burden taken by the students in this period and what should have been done differently do you think well, first off, I want to emphasize that I think um, the both the university administration and the student parliament have generally taken the student situation very seriously. And I think that they do uh, implement measures uh, to maintain the well-being of both students and employees. And I also do think that the measures that have been implemented this semester have been better than measures implemented in previous semesters. Uh, the main points of my criticism is that there are some initiatives that I find to be uh, not as worthy in terms of spending time and resources on, and that I think sometimes the university has been slow to, ad to address some of the more important issues. Uh, so my main criticism was in an article in the fall that I published along with debate editor Andrea Murk, uh, where I criticized the initiative SL or Be Kind to Yourself, uh, which was a web portal or a web solution presented by uh, the university. Uh, which consists of tips and tricks that the students could use uh, facing some of the consequences of the restrictions associated with the pandemic. The main criticism was that it arrived very late, it arrived eight months after the first lockdown in March, and that many of the tips on the site were commonsensical. The main problem with that was that by November last year, most of the students would have already gotten the tips from media actors or from professors uh, publishing articles in the media or would have figured them out for themselves so i didn't see it as a point in spending resources on i think uh, along with uh, Odrun and sandra that one of the main problems uh, facing us now is that the university facilities are closed and that students don't have a place to go they don't have a physical place to study and they don't have a place to meet their friends and i also think it's ironic that during partial lockdowns in the fall you could go to malls you could go sit down at a cafe where proper social distancing can't be held and where the measures aren't as good as at the university, but you couldn't go to the university facilities or study halls where there are proper measures where people take the pandemic very seriously and where you can meet your friends and have uh, physical connections with your subject. And I think that uh, while the university has gotten better at handling the problem with closed facilities, I think they haven't always been very good at it. One example would be in December, when the local restrictions in Bergen were lifted, but the university still chose to keep the uh, university facilities closed until Christmas, despite also the report from the expert panel having been published by that time, suggesting that you shouldn't keep the university facilities closed unless the infection situation is very, very bad. I also think that uh, the university did a bit of a better job this semester by emphasizing when there was a national lockdown that the University facilities remained open despite lectures and seminars going online. But I think now, when there was a new uh, lockdown in Bergen, that the university administration and the student parliament haven't been vocal enough publicly about the problem with closed university facilities and haven't responded in time, I think. And I also think it's important when discussing the measures to distinguish between what I consider active measures to handle the consequences of the restrictions associated with the pandemic and what one should expect the university to do naturally. One example would be the working group that was formed in January, which was formed to look at how the situation can be made more predictable for employees and students. 
uh, with suggestions so that such as making sure that the students and employees have a good warning in case the lecturer switch from digital to physical or the other way and make sure the students have good information about exam situations and exam formats in time. I think that this isn't an active measure to combat the problems associated with the pandemic, but it's part of what the university's job and what we should expect the university to do naturally, pandemic or no pandemic. So to close off, I think that the university has gotten better at handling the consequences of the pandemic, but I think there are several instances where it seems that there hasn't been given enough thought into what one spends resources and time on. Thank you. I think that's uh, um, uh, a lot of good criticism as well. And uh, you have also mentioned um, health, several of you. And we also have with us um, Einstein Sandman. Uh, he's with us on Zoom. Mm. Um, you're the leader of uh, Summon Mental Health. And what are the tendencies sees, seen uh, in the students' concerns? And what are the students' needs in general from your seen from your perspective at Summon? And what are what are the tendencies among the students throughout throughout this period? Yes, I can try to say something about that. Um, um, yeah, Summon Psychic Health is part of the Student Welfare Organization, Student Samtrippland på Vestlandet. Um, first, uh, I just mentioned um, we are 11 psychologists, five counselors, two secretary, working permanently uh, on a permanently basis. And um, in addition, we buy a lot of services to operate, cl evening clinic, uh, and we buy a lot of treatment cap capacity uh, in the city to, yeah, to uh, take care of all the students uh, coming to us. Um, we give um, individual treatment, group treatment, um, yeah, complete course, offer lectures for students, organization, educational institutions, and so on. Um, inquiries to our service has long been increasing. Uh, and it also have been increased uh, this uh, last year. Uh, but the tendencies um, have been there a little, uh, a little regardless of uh, the pandemic. Uh, we estimate that between 2,500 and 3,000 students uh, are coming to our uh, clinic each year. And in addition, students uh, come to courses and uh, other, what you call, larger events that we arrange or are a part of um, when it uh, is arranged. Um, student comes to our clinic for many different challenges and uh, some of these have uh, become so extensive that it affects um, daily function different ways in different ways and um, if, if i should say something in, in a broad sense or more general um, we say that the uh, what we see most is uh, anxiety and depression uh, yeah um, but um, we receive inquiries in the in the full range of mental health problems. Um, um, most um, students have difficulties. We think are within the range of normal psychology, if you can say it like that. It's important that the um, steps are taken early to prevent negative development and the worst case for both students and institution that the students are dropping out. Um, that's maybe the, yeah, the worst case. Um, we think that most students, they have a strong uh, desire to master studies and life in general. And through our service, we, we try to <laughs> contribute to, to that project. During the pandemic, uh, we do not see significant changes in the reasons why students uh, contact us. That um, may sound strange, but uh, maybe it ain't. Uh, when they arrive, um, they have problems that they have struggled with for a while without finding good solutions. They also this also applies now. Um, but what has triggered problems, however, uh, 
may have changed a bit uh, during the pandemic. Many students have uh, had their everyday life changed significantly. Uh, restrictions has led to fewer social meeting places. They have to spend more time alone. And at the same time, there are a lot of changes in their everyday work. Um, um, and I think we, we depend on social interaction to function well. And um, yeah, this uh, applies to, to everyone, but perhaps especially if, uh, for students who do not always have uh, their nearest uh, network available in the city where they study. And new students, they may have to, to build this network. And the pandemic has made this uh, very challenging. For some, a lot of time alone in combination with the general vulnerability can give increased mental symptoms. Um, and when they visit us, um, that is um, yeah, mostly described as um, tendencies towards anxiety, depression, low self-esteem, um, difficulty concentrating, sleeping problems, and yeah, so on. Um, we, yeah, in general, we can, we can um, give advice as um, uh, working with the structure and everyday life, exercise, diet, and so on. Um, but um, in the individual cases, um, the advice will be, uh, yeah, specific to, to, to the students uh, we are talking to. We also think that um, from our point of view, um, the advice is uh, maybe to, the most important thing is to facilitate meeting places for students. Um, a lot of work can be done uh, well digitally, but we are social uh, humans, so fundamentally social, and we need um, we need social contact to 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 feel well to to work. Um, and uh, we are uh, convinced that too little social contact over a long uh, period of time is negative for the mental health in a in a broad sense. I think that's, um, yeah, um, yes. I'll start. Hmm. Thank you, Einstein. Um, from Summon, and I think that uh, what you mentioned here in the end, uh, that the dimension of time is, is important in this uh, period. It is, it is no longer uh, temporary, these, uh, the restrictions, um, but it's, it, is, it is past almost a year, and I think that a lot of these restrictions have, um, they are sort of settling, not only in the mental health of the students, but also in the, in the economy and, uh, and in different aspects that are affecting students. So thank you for that. Um, we are now moving on to the next uh, step of this conversation. So um, if there are, are there any spontaneous reactions to, to what has been said, what you want to pick up on? Yes, Audrey. Yeah, uh, thank you. I, I think it's a, a fair criticism raised by Simon here in terms of um, how we as an institution have been also um, some, somewhat restrictive and particularly around uh, the Christmas um, uh, period or December when we decided to open campus but only after uh, an application you didn't have you didn't need to state why you wanted to come to campus but there was a procedure that we put in place to to limit the number of, of students and that it was somewhat uh, a response to uh, an, an unclear situation in terms of would we contribute to um, increased um, infections by transport uh, that student needed to undertake in order to, to come to campus, et cetera. So it has all the way been very difficult balances and where we uh, have tried to balance the, the, our obligation to follow uh, national and local guidelines as well as uh, keeping in mind the needs of the students. But in retrospect, I think we could have opened um, 
um, more widely and without that threshold of having to apply uh, to come to, um, uh, to campus. And I, I think that is something we learned and that we changed uh, in, the, in January. So um, we, we bring that forward. But what we have had as a very um, consistent um, objective for planning and, and undertaking activities is to open campus as much as possible and have as much physical teaching as possible. So we rented additional space in order to be able to offer more physical teaching. And we were so much hoping to welcome the students back now in January. And so that was, uh, it, 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 um, yeah, it's a difficult situation also, I think for all our uh, teachers, staff, and, and of course the students when we were not able to uh, come back and, and to have physical um, teaching. So uh, that's, uh, that's something we really want to be able to facilitate. And we do have a plan for, for opening that we hope that we get to implement. And uh, so we will see what, what now comes next. But I, I fully support what um, Aysen says, the importance of, of being able to meet physically because the, the, the social interaction is different when we meet physically than when we meet um, um, digitally. And I think also Sandra, she, she can probably uh, also say that uh, they have been aiming to, uh, uh, that we would open up sooner and really bringing the students needs forward. And we haven't, we have taken that on board, but still sometimes I am sure you feel that we have been too restrictive so yeah yeah I can just follow up on on the criticism that uh, Simon addresses because uh, it's um, it's good to criticize the um, the things we do to to uh, follow up the measures and um, but I, I just want to answer to that um, or to be good to yourself uh, the portal because um, when we uh, we um, uh, came with the portal. Uh, the criticism that you gave was that uh, we didn't do enough for the students. What the students needed was a better economy and, and um, uh, get over the poverty line in the Norwegian economic and um, that we weren't addressing the psychic uh, or, or like the mental health issues that are with the students. And I just want to say that we work in different ways. It's uh, not always easy to show that to the rest of the student mass in the university, but we do work uh, around every kind of like always local, national and uh, in, into the university. So. It is different paths here where we work, uh, and we have always had um, both the Vargumotaisel portal and also like, uh, yeah, I have it, have it, um, a focus also on the mental health issues and with the crisis package or the economic compensation to the students that got permitted in the uh, crisis. So. Um, what also was important for us when we wanted the portal or we we, um, uh, we came with the idea behind it was that the university came with a lot of information to the students uh, in the crisis. And we got messages from the university uh, addressing that the um, measurements of the local or the national um, um, uh, also the, the um, city council or the, the uh, department was coming with new measures or that they extended the period of the measures. And that is important information, but we uh, miss the sort of like human knowledge and like uh, we know we can we can see you, we can see that the students are uh, in a bad situation at, and that we have a challenging um, everyday life. and. The, here is what the university can do to help the students now. We can't like end the crisis, we can't end the pandemic, we can't offer you the vaccine earlier than, than the rest of the society, but here is our research on the area and that you can use in, in everyday life. So we think that it was a really good way to use that knowledge that the university has on these topics and, and also like help the students in a difficult situation. Um, and the thing about that is it is knowledge that is on the open web and that you can Google yourself uh, too, but, but this is like a collective way to, to help the students. So I think it is a really good portal. Just wanted to say that. <laughs> I think, uh, I think uh, more students also um, 
understood this this measure as a as one answer from from the university, but uh, at, it was a lack of coherence, I think, at the, at some point uh, from the restrictions from different uh, governments from different levels, and that a lot of students felt um, sort of lost and they just like lost the connection to their to their universities, and then uh, this measure came and felt like. Uh, a punch in the face or like um, yeah for a, a, a symbol of, of uh, how the university didn't, didn't didn't understand the broad situation of, of the students and that was also part of your critic um, semen uh, could I could I have an input please <laughs> yes please Go ahead. Thank you so much. Um, I think uh, a lot of the perspectives are very interesting. And I think um, a take out of the situation we have had the last year is that trying to lead during a pandemic is it's so difficult. You know, uh, you have different situations that you have never planned for. And of course, you have to learn during throughout the pandemic how to consider different measurements and different issues and how they will affect people. Uh, and of course, I think also the length of the pandemic is a great contributor to different situations and, of course, the mental health, not just only for the students, but also for younger people, you know, for people going to high school. There are... Uh, and also, I can tell you now, because it is, was a press brief when we started our seminar now, that we have actually given advice to the national government that we don't want to have strict national measurements in Bergen anymore. We want them to be lifted. And that will be, of course, up to the national government to do, um, you know, to decide that uh, in the couple of next days. And also, like, for instance, the mutant virus and that variant of the virus has done that we have to come in a different situation. And of course, Bergen in January, we were like, okay, we have beaten down um, the outbreak we had before Christmas, and now we are ready to just go on with our lives as normally as it is possible during a pandemic. But that didn't happen. Then we had national government coming with national measurements. And then a couple of weeks later, we had to have local measurements. And I know it is very difficult to plan. Um, so I think that um, in, in order to try to make things better in a way, it sounds probably strange. One of the important things for us was to give, for instance, some man more money uh, to, uh, to take care of the mental health of the students. And I think as Owen said that, okay, they have, it sounds possibly strange that they don't have like new problems. They have problems that I've had all the time, but they're more triggered during the situation we are in now. So I think it's important. And I also think it's important not to stop now. It's not over until, you know, I said that yesterday in the meeting we had, it won't be over. I'm very sad to say that when everyone is vaccinated because the situation with the mental health, with the social distancing and all the different things we are now experiencing, they, it won't disappear. It won't disappear when we are vaccinated. So we have to still have measurements and use money to prevent people from dropping out and for the mental issues they are now having. So I think that is important to say. Thank you. Thank you, Lubna. Um, wouldn't one of the, like, uh, most efficient measures that could have been done opening the the, re the spaces for reading and working at the university. I think uh, after a lot of time that seemed to be like the most urgent need for a lot of students and um, editor in um, editor in, in Universitas student uh, newspaper in, in Oslo as well said it is absurd to keep campus closed. Uh, it is an open space, it's uh, easy to act according to the restrictions, uh, and yet cafes and restaurants, supermarkets and, uh, and other places have, have been open. So it's, there's a, a still a, a lack of coherence. And this week the University of Oslo also claimed that they will open again the, from today, I think. Um, so when can we see that in, in Bergen again? Uh, other than maybe <laughs> well they, what I from what I understand uh, that Lubna says uh, 
if the government now decides that they will lift the national um, measures, then we uh, hopefully will be in that uh, situation. And and I can promise that the moment that 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 the option is there, we will open campus. Uh, so where we have said that we need some transfer time is is for the teaching part to open again. But we will certainly. Um, also uh, aim at uh, getting started at, as soon as possible, but campus will be open the moment we, we can. That's that's good. Do you, do you have a comment? On yeah, that? I can just comment that uh, that has been one of our uh, like highest priorities as uh, student representatives this period is to keep the campus open and to have uh, physical education or like um, uh, yeah offers to the students. Um, what we are concerned about the most in this uh, digital like uh, education system is that we we don't keep the students activity and the engagement around the students everyday life in in um, in uh, like up up and going so that's really important for us to come up with solutions to help the student organizations and the students themselves to stay activated in uh, this uh, sort of lifestyle thank you If I may add there, because I think we are now in a, in a position where also the government has um, aimed at helping uh, to facilitate that student organizations can meet, for instance. So they have put quite a lot of money now on the table to go uh, into supporting student organizations and as well as mental health uh, services. And we as institutions will also get some additional funding uh, so that students, uh, we can have more student uh, activities in groups where we can have more seminar leaders or we can have more student employees mm -hmm. that can follow up uh, groups of students. So I think that is important from a learning perspective, but also very much from a, a social interaction uh, perspective. So. I think um, the, the governmental and, uh, and local money that uh, the Bergen municipality also gives to the social uh, student services, I, I think th those are helpful uh, initiatives. And so now we need to get them the money at work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also, from a, an article in Universitas in Oslo, a journalist wrote that you're allowed to be pissed off in, in January. Uh, and she also pointed out that this crisis is not just a temporary one, but many students have been living in a less communicated crisis for a long time. Uh, because of scholarships that are not adequate in making... Um, and is making many dependent on part-time jobs. Seven out of 10 students uh, are dependent on that. Uh, while the rents have been on a steady increase, uh, so it's been more expensive to live for students as well. Um, and the consequences are now, they're instrumental, they are economic, they are um, health related and also uh, social. And they are urgent to many. And the lack of a, of a proper workspace is a bigger challenge than expressed in the actual restrictions right now. But do you have any any comments on the, like on the vulnerable position of students in also before the pandemic? It's mm -hmm. uh, it has sort of made it visible that students are a vulnerable uh, political group in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, what can be done to to change that? And um, yeah, I mentioned uh, housing and, and living as uh, one of the aspects here. Maybe Lubna has um, has some comments on that. How is how is Bergen uh, and the municipality working on on the housing issue? Well, the housing issue is uh, it's a collaboration, of course, between uh, local governments and national governments because we uh, we co cooperate with Saman. Uh, and in the housing issues and it is of course where the housing is going to be built but the funding is from national government so the local government does, don't like fund the housing but it's uh, planning and all the other issues concerning uh, which different facilities should be around the students is it in the center of 
uh, Bergen or is it around the different campuses in Bergen? So that is a discussion we are having with someone. Uh, and I was also looking forward to having a meeting with someone about the housing issues, but then the pandemic came. So everything was disrupted, of course. But that is that is an issue. And as, of course, a lot of students, they do rent in the private market and the private market isn't regulated. They are allowed to take how much they want to rent. And often it is... Um, poorly housing and students they don't have so much money of course as people who are working and they uh, tend to uh, to just you know settle down and say okay this is what we have and of course the pandemic has shown us that you are living in your bedroom uh, you are studying in your bedroom you are training in your bedroom you are eating in your bedroom and uh, that is of course making the burden so much more than it would had if you had to have proper housing but I think so, and and but at the same time, it's important for me to say that uh, Norwegian students are, you know, compared to other cities and not only cities, other countries, privileged in a way that we have had increasing in student funding. I know this is an ongoing issue that students, of course, they have to raise their voice because it is natural. Because I remember when I was a student, we didn't have enough funding. It was during the summer, you know, summer uh, uh, vacations, we had to work and also we had to work on site. And it is a difficult situation because you want to have all the focus on studying and being finished as a student to get out and work. And so that is a dilemma for the students and also a dilemma for both the national government, especially, but also, of course, for us as a local government. But I think the housing issues, um, this is an issue I think we have to address together with the student parliament, of course, uh, as well towards national uh, government to give us more money to fund uh, student housing and building student housing together with someone. I think that is the best way to make sure that students have a good accommodation. And also, uh, I think we have to discuss how are we building student accommodation now? Because traditionally, it was just one space, one people, one person, or you live together like at Fanto. But now I think, if you see internationally, they're building more facilities like gym, uh, social areas, stores and other stuff. So I think that is also an important issue we have to address when we are uh, finally uh, at the end of dealing with this pandemic. Any comments on, on that? Yes. Sandra. Yeah. So the student economy is uh, is really interesting to talk about, and one again one of our biggest priorities as student representatives, and um, and it is like a misconception, or or um, many people think that students are a privileged. Uh, part of the society and that we have good funding we have good economic and we we are living the time of our lives and and all of this uh, but at the same time this pandemic has really shown how vulnerable we are as a student uh, group because we we aren't a part of the uh, welfare system that is uh, for example when we get permitted the students will not get daycare money uh, in in the same way that uh, other people in the society will will get so that is an, uh, an a thing we have worked really hard with as student representatives this year and um, in the spring semester we got like a crisis package um, that gave compensation economic compensation to the students that have been permitted but uh, it's really good to see that this new crisis uh, package will will uh, also go to the the institutions themselves and the some ship and and the uh, other um, actors in this so uh, it is a better package but it's uh, always a way to go because of the students are like a special kind of group that doesn't um, isn't a part of the the um, uh, welfare system as uh, as others if I could just comment, just so there is no miscommunication, uh, I don't mean that students are a part of the privileged part of the society, but of course, compared to things happening around the world, Norwegian students are, you know, more privileged. But of course, what this crisis has shown us is, as uh, you said just now, that they are not a part of the welfare system. And when I was a student, I, I, I had a child and that was very difficult because the father wasn't a part of the, um, the, the 
uh, the way how we handled that. So I was just all by myself, had to take all the leave and he wasn't allowed to take the leave. That is just one example. And now also you had, for, for instance, when they're laid off work, they don't get daycare money and everything. So I totally agree with you. And that is a big national issue. I wish we could do something at the local government, but of course we cannot do that because that is a national issue and has to be addressed. And I will, of course, address those issues together with you anytime. So that is very important for me to address that. Thank you, Lubna. <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> you had a comment. Uh, yes, okay. yeah, I, I think again, the, the pandemic has uh, shown the variable uh, issues around the student group. And I, you have already addressed the the, the housing is, issue and, and the funding, the stipends, and, and particularly are also the dependence of, of uh, additional work that has been demonstrated very clearly uh, throughout. And, and then, but what I wanted to uh, highlight are two other um, uh, issues. And that is also, I think, to understand what it is to be uh, a student uh, isn't only, uh, as for, uh, for us as an institution, isn't only to address their learning. Of course, we should offer a good educational um, program to, to students, but we also need to address them as human beings and, and, and work closely with the students and make sure that there is a, a good scientific social life uh, at the university and in Bergen for students. And, and again, over the years, we have become more and more aware of, of that social integration as well, and that that is a responsibility that we should take. And, and for that reason, we have then, along with um, the Student Welfare um, Organization Summon, did we apply to the uh, Directorate of Health to get funding to start up a mentorship program where we have uh, uh, master level students, for instance, that are, will be um, mentors uh, for bachelor level students. So we have organized that the bachelor first year students into groups of 20 and, and with the aim of socializing and get to know each other and get a solid network when you come new. Uh, to uh, to the city and or to, and to the University of Bergen. So I think that again is about addressing another uh, issue of the vulnerability that you don't come to us with a strong network and that we need to help the the students bring that uh, or build that uh, network. And then there is one other group that I think is of particular importance right now as we speak, and that are all those international students that have come to Bergen and that haven't been able to socialize with anybody yet because we haven't had any physical um, um, uh, teaching yet. They have, of course, been able to, to socialize digitally, but again, I think they we, we need to, to also pay special attention to that group and make sure that we put in place good social integration um, initiatives when we open up. Yes, Simon. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to um, make comments about, um, about the discussion about the economy because I think that the mentorship program has been a very good um, measure that has been implemented by the university. And I think that generally money invested in bettering the situation for the students is a good idea. But I also think there has been some tendency to funnel a lot of money into uh, the university and into the student welfare organization without really having a proper plan for how that money is to be spent. Because I think the one of the main problems is that students haven't been able to attend physical events or that student organizations don't have the capacity to arrange proper digital events. So I think the problem is that a lot of money has been funneled into the student organizations, but the students' organizations aren't equipped to deal with it. And I think that with the money that is invested in bettering the student situation, there should also be a concrete plan for how to have as much, uh, as many physical social events as possible, because that is what the students really need. Uh, Einstein, do you have a comment on that, sir? Yes, uh, just a comment on what was said uh, here, that... Um, um, yeah, Libna mentioned it that uh, when when the crisis is over, we we still have um, probably a lot of work to do also in the mental health issue. And um, during the last um, seven eight years, uh, we had um, a, a doubling, uh, yeah, twice as much people uh, students coming to our clinic. And um, of course, 
we can't uh, we can't continue solving all these problems uh, through giving um, students individual therapy or something like that we have to to look at it in a broader sense and we have to make um, is, uh, yeah places spaces where where student can um, take care, care of uh, some of their mental health to um, contact with each other and um, meeting, uh, finding meanings and so on. Um, I think it's uh, not uh, realistic that uh, we can solve um, these things only with uh, continuing giving <laughs> one-on-one students uh, as psychology uh, or, or um, yeah, appointment with a psychologist. That's um, yeah, we, we see it already now. And of course, students uh, also can get that when they need it. But um, we have to to look at it uh, in um, in a broader sense. Absolutely, uh, Lubna, do you have a comment on that? Yes, thank you. And I, I think it's important to think that we have to have preventive measurements also before students start being students. And we see a tendency in our society that young people, they have more anxiety, um, they are more self-conscious, they have difficulties towards friendships and all these issues. I think it is uh, important that we see them uh, as also doing preventive measurements already starting from a young age and also being able to talk about uh, difficult feelings and how also um, that life actually isn't easy all the time. Sometimes life is difficult. So I think uh, to prevent that we have to use like double and even triple uh, the money in giving, giving counseling on an individual level, we have to talk about preventive measurements also earlier. And that is also a big discussion now uh, because of the pandemic, we see that we have difficulties uh, even with quite young children in our municipality. Uh, so that is a very worrying uh, issue for us as politicians. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Lubna. Uh, I would just like to um, mention that uh, we have still a few minutes left and that if you're listening to, you can still uh, ask questions in, in the comments. Um, Anyone want to comment on anything yet? I think Sandra, an on. important uh, aspect that um, uh, is uh, spoken about here with uh, Istan and Lubna is that um, the students are the futures, uh, like the one that is going to solve uh, futures um, um, challenges. So that is an important thing to have in mind when we come with these measures and that we weight them with what consequences that will have for the future generation. And, and that we take in mind that this isn't a, a group that uh, is privileged and that they, they have challenges that can have uh, much more consequences than, um, than these um, single measurements that we have today. So, so that is an important thing to, to have in mind in, in the future measurements, I think. Yes, hmm. yeah, no, I think uh, when Lubna is talking also about uh, the preventive measures, I, I think that mm -hmm. can also be connected to, to some of what we as, an, as a institutions are doing and, and the mentorship groups that we uh, initiate. And I, I think that um, the importance of stu students meeting in smaller groups is to build friendships and connection and, and this cohesiveness is, is, is very uh, important for us as human beings. And, and so to have one or, or a few close friends is important, but also to, to be able to contribute, not only uh, receive, but to be a contributor into a group is, is something that also um, develop uh, us as human beings. And I think so these group events and, and, be, and having the opportunity to meet physically in groups, whether it is in an educational setting or through the student organization has an enormous, I think, potential also to 
develop uh, a capacity for for initiative and for caring beyond yourself and which i think is very important uh, in towards what you're talking about sandra that uh, around the, the future generations and and that the students should be uh, will be in position uh to develop um measures and initiatives to uh, as to how we can deal with global challenges for instance mm. Mm. i think also it's um easier to like get differences between the study day and the everyday like um, after studies uh, with the situation that has been addressed earlier today with uh, how the um, how we are living as students it's so much easier to to get away from the study life and like meet people through the student organizations and the the smaller groups and the initiatives that is more more um, low maintenance and, and uh, with people. So that is an important aspect also to, to um, activate and engage the students. Um, I was wondering if you, Odrun, can say a bit more about um, how the measures or how the uh, what you've done in your what you did in your expert groups how will that be be implemented uh, at the university at the university in the times to come mm. Mm. yeah I, I can say a bit about the expert group that was composed of representatives from the higher education uh, institutions so I was representing um, that, that group we had the student organization the chair uh, or representatives from there then the student welfare organizations were uh, represented and then the the directorate of health as well as the national public health uh, institute uh, were there along with some other um, uh, groups and it, this was all chaired by the ministry of um, uh, education and I, I think bringing together the different perspectives was very important for, for the, the outcomes. And it was, again, the National Public Health Institute. They were a driving force as to finding out uh, or setting some thresholds as to when we really needed to close down campus. And that was only in extreme situations where, where the where uh, infections were out of control and we were not able to track uh, the, the, the first patient or the, the one who had brought um, uh, the, the infection to, um, to the place or the city. And I think uh, when we came then with uh, the, the mutant virus, I think that was an alarm that was, was set up and, and the threshold was, was, well, it was said that we now had this extreme situation. And but I so what I'm hoping is that because now we have more control that there is a better overview and, and we know where uh, the infection came in uh, to Bergen, for instance, or to Norway from abroad. And um, when we have more better overview and we can track the, the infection, I think it is important that we as soon as possible uh, open up uh, for, um, for the campus. And that was the idea of the, of the report to say that only in extreme situations we should close campus. And so the main approach would be to keep campus open throughout the pandemic and um, have physical um, uh, teaching as much as possible, but in smaller groups. And when we had increasing um, levels of, um, of uh, infection, that, that was when we should introduce digital measures and start out then by uh, uh, first going online with the bigger groups and still maintain physical uh, teaching for, for smaller group uh, occasions. So it's a very systematic approach and identified thresholds uh, with regard to the level of infection that is in the local community, um, giving guidelines as to whether the campus should be open and teaching should be physical or uh, digital. So I hope that that report can be used now more systematically and at our own institution, but first and foremost, I think by national and uh, local uh, municipality. And, and we took also an initiative as an institution to uh, introduce uh, the measures uh, suggested by the expert committee to the local municipality. And, and so I know that the awareness there has been uh, uh, also taken into account the recommendations and 
and also the need to uh, address uh, student health when measures are put in, in place. So I, I think that is the most important focus of, of that uh, expert committee recommendation. Hmm. Uh, we just have a um, few minutes left. Are there any any other comments uh, among the panel? Yes, um, I would like yes, to ahead. just uh, put on. Um, maybe it's an, uh, yeah, a little interesting thing. We, we see in our clinic that um, when we are closing uh, down totally, uh, every everything was uh, done um, uh, by video uh, consultations. And um, and uh, now we see that uh, many students they uh, don't want video. Uh, they are uh, specific on uh, asking for uh, physical meetings, uh, physical appointments with the, uh, the psychologists and counselors. And um, sometimes it's also if they are only offer the consultation by video. They uh, tell us, okay, then uh, I I like to wait a week or two or see if uh, it's possible to get a uh, physical meeting. So I think, um, yeah, they are very tired of uh, talking to people uh, through uh, <laughs> through their uh, yeah PCs or yeah. So um, and we I think we see it more and more. Um, yeah. So um, it's just an interesting thing to observe. Mm. Mm. Yes, just, yeah, because I, I think that's interesting uh, because um, it's quite a different situation now than it was in the fall semester. Mm. Um, in the fall semester, you had an open society where uh, we just came to campus. We had the, the first week we had, uh, you know, everything was open um, and we had a different type of approach to the vaccination and we, we did see the light in the tunnel. But now uh, after Christmas, it's, it, it's totally different uh, type of uh, message from the authorities and, and, and um, the vaccination. We can also see now the light in the tunnel, of course, but it is a different approach to the whole situation. And we can see now that this is, uh, is uh, measurements that will last for a time uh, in front of us. So I think that's an, an important thing also to think about that the students uh, now is at a whole other uh, approach to the whole situation than in the in the fall semester. And that's important to have in mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I guess my our time is um, is coming to an end soon. Um, we've uh, touched upon a lot of different aspects of uh, of the challenges for students and and for governments on different levels as well uh, throughout the pandemic. And we have heard that it is a challenge to govern in times of crisis, uh, but it should be of, of the highest priority to, to help out the most vulnerable groups first. Uh, and I think I'm really happy to see that uh, the, the, the debate on the students um, position is being lifted and the awareness is uh, is also being lifted and uh, which is really good so i guess we have to wait for the national um, government to to open up uh, for the rest of the students to come back to to universities and we are absolutely looking forward to it and then i would like to to say thank you to all of you for coming here to bergen global today to join us in this conversation uh, also to you, Lubna and Eystein, thank you for be, uh, joining us on Zoom. And uh, we in the Collaboratory Law Transform Bergen School of Global Studies and Bergen Global uh, will be back in um, with more in this seminar series. So thank you all for